pretty exceptional record. Few have got a better one than that. Likes of Taylor and Van Gerwen. And Price, obviously, multiple winners of the tournament. Six times Taylor the champ, three times Van Gerwen, three times Gerwin Price. Now, the treble 18 was the target. And Ratajski here, Mark, with a three-figure combination, but by no means the most difficult three-figure combination to go two up. And his darts land flat as well, so he shouldn't block the double top now. This to back up the break with a Templar's finish and hold, and he does. Really efficient from Christoph Ratajski. Two legs, two Templar's finishes. Look at that, he's only thrown one dart at a double in the match, Way That's how far he's been adrift in terms of the scoring phase of the legs we've seen so far. He's not getting a look in, really, on the outer ring. He's going to get a look in in this leg, and similar to the last leg, he could. Well, that treble makes it that he hasn't got a chance to lay this up, but he still may get a couple of visits. Is he going to try and force his way through? He's weighing up his options here. Yeah, a sensible decision. Tops now for the 96 checkout. Brilliant from James Way, and he's still 100% on the doubles. In this match. Where is he going? So it keeps him away from double 16. Double five. This is a big dart for Christoph Ratajski. Man, he's missed 11 darts at doubles. This to go in front again. And he misses again. So many opportunities for the pole in this match. But Wade now has a chance to lead for the first time. Double top. He won't miss, will he? He has. He's got one in hand. He has. He's missed twice. Has to be said to be a surprise. He'll be missing doubles, though. You don't relish these finishes. Christoph taking his time. Little set back. Got it just to go on top. That's a great guy, surely. And he doesn't use it. And the missed doubles continue. 14. That's missed at doubles for Christoph Wojcicki throughout this match. Two apiece missed to win the seventh leg. That could be the decisive one. Wade wants double ten. Wade is dead. And he's in. He's in the lead as well. The stats of the players that have qualified for this event on the PDC Pro Tour on checkout stats, doubling percentages at almost 44%. He's the best in the business on the outer ring. And he's proved tonight that that is key. Or he's proving. He's got to finish it off, mind you. Could do it in style here. Well, right. now just the careful here to get the big 20. No. Shenanigans going too close to those first two darts and di diverting into the treble. He leaves tops to prolong the tie. Christoph. That hasn't been the problem. This has been the difficult part for him, the outer ring. But he does send it to the side in leg. He'd have to be pretty harsh to say that Christoph doesn't deserve. But Christoph's been there with him. Credit to him. there for a moment to emulate Willie Borland from the World Championship and winning a match with a nine-dart finish. But anyway, Wade has first chance. Double 20 leaves double five, single leaves the bullseye! That's a match start. He's got himself off the mat here, Christoph Ratajski. Testament to him, but this will be interesting. Where's he going? Well, he's persisting on that double 16. Sigh of relief because he almost hit the treble and he left double seven. Has it been kind to him? But it is on this occasion. He's dug in deep to find a way to win. 70. That would get him going. Well, that's a shame. It was right there. Just got the wrong side of that first there. I mean, he would have had to go for it, but you know he would have been there. Yeah. 58. Robbie require 88. 88. For a vital leg, he has to win. And yeah, it's been a well played leg here. Um, and he's pretty disappointed if he doesn't end up picking this leg off. Pretty aggressively opts for the treble 20 rather than the 18s, which yeah. would guarantee a shot at like full. That. Like that, John. Brilliant. Really like that approach. Up to the 25. 
Well, this 1-2-2, two, two, very important in the context of the match here. Clear marker on 90, so this has to go. Very doable as well. But got to get that treble. It was awkward, wasn't it? You could see with that camera angle. The irony being, and then, you know, on that big out shot, he had two trebles. He just needed one of them there, and he couldn't get it. It's very frustrating. That's brilliant. Under pressure. Superb from Clearmacker and Rob Cross here on the six starts from 156 for Cross to level this. Oh, he not need them. Ah, he doesn't want to use six. But... He should be happy with that. Probably disappointed not to be on a double though with the first start where it was. And look at the pressure coming in. Oh. <laughs> Well, he didn't mean 56. to leave 35, but he won't mind it much either. Depends if Cross can punish this poor leg from the Dutchman. Now, after all that, Stuart, we're back to the point where Rob has the throw. The, the leg difference thing, as good as it could be in a loss. So why didn't he go to treble 18 with the second ball? It may not matter. Oh, another of those for tops. Well, he, he missed the double 18 after getting those two and the 144. Will this one go? No. He's going to work on those doubles on the big shots. <laughs> well, yeah, there you go. Irony of ironies. may not make any difference, but I'm afraid you've only got yourself to blame, fella. Rob Cross has battled away here, gritted his teeth, and he's won the game from 3-1 down. He's won the last three legs as well from 4-2 down. I was surprised as well when we were looking back. Just the fifth appearance here for Stephen Bunting. I mean, he's been playing over here for so long. I think it's just a testament to how difficult this tournament is to qualify for. Yeah, it made coming through the qualifier look easy, Stephen Bunting, but it isn't easy to get here. This is an awkward situation. Could be a dart at the ball. It is. And that will do it. Stephen Bunting holds his throw once more. Which is why he's going to stay there. He could bring the ball into play. Yeah, well, th look, if Dave Chisholm had been on a finish, that completely changes his strategy. But what it does do, it leaves him a single to double combination to go back into the lead. Yeah, very good thinking, strategic playing. And that's the thing, you just want to leave yourself the best possibility, the best chance of moving these legs. Stephen, you've acquired 56. Similar shot from Chiz there, bringing the ball in to leave single to double. Stephen Bunting for 4-3 to go one leg away from victory. Oh, it's beautiful. His finishing has been superb in this game. Four out of six on the doubles for Stephen Bunting. There's all sorts of question marks about Stowe Bunts, the American qualifier in this group. Because we just haven't seen enough of him, we haven't seen him on the telly before. So this game could be absolutely vital in determining who gets out of this group. They both could, of course. Maybe neither. But whoever wins this is in such a strong position in Group E. Well, the players that do win their opening match and do make that very strong start, you've just got that little bit more wiggle room. You've got that, if, you, if you do slip up, you've still got another chance, but everyone else is going to be chasing. Chizzy chasing double 16, and for the third time in three games tonight, we go to a last leg decider. A massive last start there from Bunting. And that wasn't the treble he needed. 
this finds the trouble, 20, he's got a chance. He doesn't, and once again, Stephen Bunting is given the luxury of two visits from a big combo finish. The grimace from Chiz tells a story. It's out of his hands. Glimmer of hope from Chisnell. Phil again, a two treble visit needed just to put on that bit of pressure for Stephen Bunting. He's going to be on something makeable. He is on a ton, he's on a two darter. We have not had a ton plus finish in this game. Both of them are looking at a low ton plus out. If either of them go, it wins the match. Looks a good guy for the 54. He cannot find it. 96. Take the final 100. Chizzy just taking that step back, taking his time. And this is for the match. Treble 20. It's got to be two tops from there. There's one, and there's loads of room for another. It's in, Dave, but he needs another. Oh, my word, Dave Chisnell, it's agonising. Amazing, and Stephen Bunting couldn't even bring himself to watch, but does get another chance. It was heading that way. Bunting knew how close it was, and he wasn't even looking, but he takes out the double four to win it by a whisker. Chizzy goes down in his opening game. The other thing is he's he, he taking the pressure off himself and he's actually playing for fun and enjoyment as well. Of course he wants to win. Yeah, he, he's here to win. He, I, you, players enjoy winning. It's all right, playing well, but when you're used to winning like Gary is, it's all about getting the W at the end of the day. 54 or staying there, double 13. That was pretty good, a 118 and a 146 and a 12 data. In the success that he's had on the, on the Pro Tour this year, his finishing has been, is one of the best, up around 40, 47, 48%, and now he, a 177 from Anderson. Yeah, when these big hitters are just anything north of 40, there are to be. That's a percentage that they, they kind of work on because they know they're going to hit plenty of treble 20s and 19s and bullseye finishes and stuff. Massive dart for Gary Anderson and he gets it. Couldn't muster a dart in 32. Well, that is ultimate faffing from Gary Anderson. I just think he's gone off tops for a, for a minute, uh, Stu. Well, he's missed 13 darts of double. Wow. Dirk's now missed 11. Anderson didn't expect this chance. This is an absolute certainty, surely. Wow. Two out of 18 on the doubles, Gary Anderson. Yeah. Can he reach ones? I still get the feeling he can't reach the top of the board, you know. This time? has missed 18 darts at double, Van Dijven Bona has missed 14, 32 darts missed at a double in six legs. Did well there, Dirk. Remember, he hasn't reached the top of the board as yet. 
You've got to give it to Dirk. He's in there battling and battling, and he's just hung around. And he's taken more chances than Gary. Freedom. Look at that. You could see after the first dart. Bullseye. Count it's a double to save his life. 18 darts, he's missed a double, and then he nails the ball. Go figure. 100. Looks like it. Well, I'm not sure Gary realised he was on 174 there. I don't think he'd have wanted a 60 to leave double 17. Anderson, it's worth saying, is still averaging 96 97 100. despite missing 18 darts. Yes. It's ridiculous. I mean, Everything about it is ridiculous. Got to move. Clinical, just like the bullseye in the last leg. It's 4 4. And you get the feeling if Gary Anderson's going to win this game, he's going to need to his need to add to his tally of 140s or 180s even. Double 18 left, amazing. Gary, Gary. Uh, can Dirk produce something extra special? Well, can Anderson come back and win three consecutive legs? On the back of 141.40 to give himself this opportunity. That is superb from Gary Anderson. Yes, he may have missed 18 darts at a double. Luke Wright at the moment. I asked him if he still got to the gym. Is he regular focusing on that? But he's more concentrating on eating well. Staying mentally focused. Well, he's going to need to be at the moment because Steve Lennon, we asked for his A plus game. Right now, he's not too far away from that, averaging 110. It's a big performance so far from Steve Lennon. And again, having the luxury of being able to have six darts at a kind of 10 plus finish and just doing enough, setting up the shot and getting the opportunity for a 3 1 lead. And it's at about this point that Steve Lennon will be thinking about what he could achieve here. Be a massive scalp on night one here at the Grand Slam. Yeah, you can see the frustration evident in his face. You look over to Luke Humphries with a 1 5 3 and expect to be back. He will be back. It's all well must focus on that first start. Sorry, Glenn, it's all well good coming back, but when you've got a split five, isn't it? It's this is key for Steve Lennon. If this will hurt if this leg gets away from him. He's doing the right thing here, just taking a step back. Yeah, that's exactly what I would have done. That big one there. And that's my concern for Steve Lennon. And for me, them three darts, just really for me how his career has been. He's put himself in fantastic positions. And you can't do that against this man. It's been advantage Lennon so far. But right. Steve Lennon's gone. His last 50 games that Luke Humphries has played, he's won 40 of them. And I just looked at him when he was 2 0 down, and there was no signs of distress. He didn't look vulnerable up there. He just remained totally focused, and I think that's where he's improved the past couple of years. He's just so mentally strong right now, and that beautiful flow and throw that he has, so rhythmical. Fourth in the world now, Luke Humphreys, and he illustrated a bit of everything about his game at the Grand Prix. There was a game against Joe Cullen where he was never at his best, but won the game in the semi-final. Here we go with a 1-4-7, and that's what he can do right in the corner, and Luke Humphreys leads for the first time, and a pull back to that Grand Prix as well. He found Ivan Bowden. Yeah, mouth-watering, because Der Van Dijenboer, for me, didn't look 100%. We walked past him as he was leaving the match there, and I think he was quite happy with the way things sort of went. You know, it's that unknown with Dirk at the moment. Whereas with Humphreys and Anderson, they're looking really good at the moment, Mark. Yeah, they are. No. Rightly so, the favourites to go through this group. That was a slip from Steve Lennon. Yes, it's a very gettable shot, but it should have been a lot easier. Now he's under pressure. This could be a fourth consecutive leg, unless 
Steve Lennon get rid of his 110. He needs a, bit, a big treble. He can't find one. Luke Humphreys taking control here. Luke Humphreys 16. And the setup play was fantastic. Can the finish and be clinical? Yes, it can. Humphreys leads 4 2. That's what will haunt him in this match because he started well. He, he was, his average peaked around 110 at that stage. He missed doubles. He started messing around with five. And from there, Luke Humphreys has just taken control. Yes, yeah, just sucked the energy out of him, hasn't it? And it's been one way traffic since then. But fair play to Steve Leonard. He's still battling, he's still fighting. And demonstrate the qualities and skills that he has. He's not going to go out with the biggest shot in the mall. He'll expect to return. Yeah, we've seen some amazing finishes today already. There's something special about this 164. Treble 18 is what's needed. And Humphreys is 70 points away from the match and an open and win. This for his opening points on the board and a clinical performance in the end from Luke Humphreys. Positives for Steve Lennon, he averaged around about 96. Showing some good stuff over there in the US, but this is a different prospect. This is the Grand Slam and I've been reliably informed he was a fan first. Picked up the darts a little bit later in life and really now just starting to make some inroads over in the USA. Well, those are two very good darts and he puts a third on top. To land the maximum in the opening leg and tee himself up for a break of the right throw in the opening leg of the match, and that would be a real blow. 31. 62. Double 16 to land a stow blow in the opening leg. Takes the Peter right throw. The first time of asking. Great start. Well right by any manner of means. Bunks looking very comfortable up there on the big stage. In this group, Stephen Bunting squeaked past Dave Chisnell, five legs to four. And so in the second them. round of matches in each group, the two winners from the first round will meet, and the two players who lost their opening match will meet in the second game. Tops, tops. This is sensational, make no mistake about it. And so, a chance to get back to within a single leg for Snakebite. But he'll need to find the treble above that first dart. And he can't do so. And now he's vulnerable again to a break of throw. And it would be the third break of throw that Stowe Bunch has achieved. Yes. Double top it is. And who is Stobunt anyway? Well, I'll tell you what. See, they have to do what they can do. It's wonderful to see it. He's back in the red bit again. Well, it's simply staggering. It's astonishing errors. And when Wright won the fourth leg, you thought maybe normal service was going to be resumed. But now, double 18. And that was for the match, by the way, for a 1-5-6. He couldn't quite kill it off with the fireworks, but it wasn't far away. And Stobunt's here has really put on a darting demolition job of Peter Snake by Wright from the get-go. He won the first three legs. Now, double 18 for the match for a 5-1 round. And there it is. And the American has destroyed Peter Wright. The 90s and a glimpse of what she can do there. Wow. In that run to the quarterfinals two years ago, you mentioned she got through the group, beat Gabriel Clemens, beat Mike Decker. And in one of those spells, she averaged over 101 in beating Mike Decker. That is what she can do, and it was with darts like that. She needs more visits like that, but she's bought herself some time here in this leg. Unless she needed to win and impressively does just that. Celebrating at, at Windsor Castle, presented with the, the honour by Prince William. 
She's showing here she's still the princess of dark. 3 1 80s for Fallon. After a nervy start. Fallon's average getting up towards 99 now. 57. Michael Van Gogh won't be panicking, but won't be overly relaxed on that stage at the minute. This could be it. This is a key leg. After that, the first couple of legs when she was understandably perhaps a bit nervous. Played superbly. Leads to double 13, and when Michael Van Gogh was in this sort of mood with his finishing, all Fowler can do is smile. Team at the leg well, and a nod of the head there from Michael Van Gerwen. He went a bit wayward with the second dart, but leaves a two dart finish to cap off a fine display. Yeah, no need for Van Gerwen to even contemplate going for the ball. So double 16 for Van Gerwen to start his quest for a fourth Grand Slam crown. Yeah, to cap off a classy display. Looks awkward, but it wasn't. And brilliant from Michael Van Gerwen. An average of around about 102. A nervy start from Fallon Sheriff. Probably a better alternative than when he had the Wolves team logo shaved into the side of his head a few years ago. Yeah, you just sense the crowd. I mean, the crowd have been brilliant today. When you try to get every crumb that you can do to get them on your side, but you can see them at the back there now. I mean, just imagine playing in front of that crowd when you're on the stage, when, when you're playing well. It's a tremendous venue, a wonderful competition, and it really was the catalyst for Michael Smith last year. To, you know, before going to Ali Pali, and look at the success he had there, but look at that. It's where you want to be. Sold out all the way through this weekend. More tickets sold than ever before here at the Aldersley Leisure Village for this year's Grand Slam. And Michael Smith, the defending champion, is just bossing this game. Nathan Gerbin yet to have a dart at double. May not get one in this leg. 72 left, so that leaves double 12. And that will do the job. He knows exactly where the camera is. A lovely feeling. And there's the respect there from Nathan Gerbin, but just so a come out of this with anything because the head has already dropped you can see it in his demeanor he's not even in the contest and Michael Smith has very little plan on letting that change it takes his average over 100 right now much better there from Nathan Gervin you can just see the eyebrows flicked and that's a nice moment for the young lad it's a nice moment it might change the course of this leg bullseye though a little bit of mercy from the bully boy, a chance for Gervin. But just looking at Michael, he just looks very at ease with himself. This is for Michael Smith fans, this is a good sign. But come on, Nathan, big 17, four tops. Oh, yes! That is 297 points cleared in just two visits to the board. Well, second max for Michael Smith. He's just seen his opponent clear nearly 300 points in two visits. He might clear 350 in, because surely he'll go for this. If he has the option, he might have the option. Take the option! Oh! And all of a sudden, Nathan just beginning to relax and... Like you said, when you haven't been playing regular, he did need that time. However, it is all about this man. We felt at the beginning of this game. Just as Wilge's runner-up to the amazing Josh Rock, who averaged over 104 in this game. And whatever happens, I think he'd be better for it. Well, it always looked like one of the toughest assignments taking on Michael Smith in the group stage of the Grand Slam of Darts.
but he's acquitted himself well towards the back end of this game, Nathan Gervin. However, his debut experience might be coming to an end in just a few short moments' time, or maybe not. Really is hammering those into the ball. I guess you'd be thinking, why couldn't you have done this at the starters? This is for the match. Match start missed for the second time. He's missed double ten, he's missed the bullseye. Can Nathan Gervin conjure up something magical? No, he can't, is the answer. So to wrap it up and preserve his brilliant status as unbeaten for more than five years in the Grand Slam group phases.